And right now at 6 o'clock, there are calls for action on ghost guns. We'll tell you what lawmakers are trying to do to help police get these weapons off the streets. More mosquitoes testing positive for West Nile. Which communities are impacted and what you can do to protect yourself. Also a community coming together after a historic church erupts in flames. There's a look at the damage. We're talking about the rebuilding efforts right now at the News at 6. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And first at 6, we are keeping an eye on the potential for severe storms this morning. Good morning, Sunshine. Thank you for joining us here. I'm Symphony Privet. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning to you. Let's get right over to meteorologist Rachel Piscatelli as, uh, for the second straight day. There's a lot to talk yeah, about. It's kind of eerie out there yeah. in Middletown. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, there's a soggy start right now. And while the chance is low for severe weather this morning, it's not zero. So, of course, we want to yep. keep a close eye on that. So some areas right now dealing with um, some rain and others are really dry, but just muggy conditions. So over in Hartford now, here's what it looks like. It's dry, but you saw in the Middletown camera. Well, not necessarily dry there where dew points are up this morning, very elevated. So it's just sticky 71 degrees now over in Hartford. Here's what it looks like on the satellite and radar. A couple of spotty showers and even some brief downpours towards about uh, East Hampton, Middletown, Cromwell, those darker shades of green indication of those heavier downpours. Chester, East Haddam also dealing with that. And then also in northeastern Connecticut, more moderate rain with the indication of those darker greens, but yellows and oranges too popping up on the map just north of Putnam moving over 395 now but no thunderstorm activity in the state currently it's in the upper 60s towards Torrington Waterbury 68 degrees 74 over in the Elm City so throughout the morning we are going to be watching the potential for any strong severe thunderstorms to develop in the afternoon some spotty showers or thunderstorms are possible too but the chance for severe weather does diminish towards this afternoon we'll pop we'll bring out some pops of sunshine this afternoon too and temperatures will move into the upper 70s to right around that 80 degree Mark. Falling humidity is expected overnight, leading to a more comfortable day tomorrow. We are under that level one risk for severe weather today, but I think the worst of that, so the better chance for any severe weather is going to be for eastern Connecticut and then portions of Rhode Island and also Massachusetts with the main concern here going to be some damaging winds, but we'll keep a close eye to see if there's any rotation in any of those storms too. We'll take a closer look at that hour by hour forecast coming up in just a bit, but in the meantime, let's get a check out on the roads this morning with no major delays out there now. Some wet roads that you may have to keep a close eye on and just be mindful. Give yourself some extra time. Some ponding out on the roads is certainly possible over in Weathersfield now, both the north and the southbound side running smoothly along 91. We'll take a closer look in New Haven just before the I-95 connector here where things are running smoothly. Bridgeport to Fairfield at 7 minutes. Traffic speeds averaging just around 41 miles per hour on the southbound side of 95. Alrighty, thank you, Rachel. Well, happening today, lawmakers, police and safety advocates will call on Congress to take action to get ghost guns off the streets. Now, Fox 61's Brooke Griffin joins us live at the Hartford Police Department with more on why they say this is so important. Brooke, good morning. Hi, good morning to you both. Senator Richard Blumenthal is reintroducing the Ghost Guns and Untraceable Firearms Act. Now, the goal is getting some of those untraceable weapons off the streets. Lawmakers introduced this legislation originally earlier this year. It would require those who make or sell ghost guns to comply with federal gun regulations. It would also require the makers of those guns to add serial numbers to the parts in their kits. Now, if you don't know, ghost guns are made using 3D printers or even DIY kits. The parts are usually tr untraceable because they don't contain serial numbers or any other identifiers. Hartford police say in 2020 they seized seven of those guns. Last year, that number jumped to 58 guns and halfway through this year, police already seized 24 of them. This is the latest effort to regulate those ghost guns. Earlier this year, Connecticut Attorney General William Tong announced a crackdown on the companies that make parts for those so-called ghost guns. That happened after companies shipped kits from out of state. Today, Blumenthal will meet with Hartford police, city leaders and anti-gun advocates. And of course, that meeting is taking place here at the Hartford Police Department, and we will have all the information from what those lawmakers say coming up later this afternoon. Live in Hartford, Brooke Ruffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Okay, Brooke, thank you for that. That is uh, 6.04 this morning. A murder suspect had his bail set at $5 million because police said 
He was already free on bond after being charged in connection with a different deadly shooting two years ago. This is Chan Williams Bay. He's accused of shooting and killing Jordan Phipps and also shooting another man. Police said that happened early Sunday morning on Weathersfield Avenue. Now, police said Williams Bay is still awaiting a trial on that shooting two years ago and has a host of other cases before the court as well and was supposed to be home under intense supervision. Well, a man accused of threatening staff at two Catholic churches also went before a judge. Michael Pickering is accused of making those threats over the phone and by email. An arrest warrant said he left messages accusing the churches of turning his children against him. He also asked to speak with a priest and called them, quote, fake fathers. Officers said when they tried to serve an arrest warrant, Pickering refused to leave his home, which led to a standoff that did end peacefully. Well, this morning in Norwich, community members are sharing a message of hope after a historic church caught fire. More than 100, for more than 100 years, the Green Church has been a landmark in the Taftville neighborhood. On Saturday night, flames broke out, but thankfully, firefighters were able to stop the flames from spreading to the entire building. However, water damage and debris extended to other areas of the church. Community members are now raising money and offering support to rebuild. What gives me hope is the support of the people, you know, the love. We may not know how to fix it or where the money might come from, but certainly um, God is here and here with the people. Yeah. And uh, I think it will work out. Well, this morning, officials are still looking into the cause of that fire. Police ask anyone who saw what happened to give them a call. Well, it seems to be a heavy mosquito season, but as far as West Nile virus is concerned, we are not seeing any explosion in numbers. No human cases yet, but as usual, it's being found in more and more mosquitoes all over the state. Some were recently found in Brantford and East Haven. The state also said they found them in East Haddam, Fairfield, New Canaan, South Windsor, Stamford, Wallingford, and Wethersfield. But remember, folks, there's a big, big difference between finding them in mosquitoes and finding them in people. Last year, seven people in Connecticut it got sick with West Nile virus. The first case wasn't identified until August 11th. So take the usual precautions against mosquitoes. Limit your time outside at dusk and dawn. Use repellent. Cover up that bare skin and get rid of standing water where they breed. All right. Well, with uh, summer, I guess, closer to ending than beginning, officials are going to stress how important summer camps are for young people in our state. Governor Lamont is expected to visit the Greater Hartford Academy for the Arts today. That academy has played host to a summer camp for kids, and that camp does get financial support through a grant from the Education Department. The academy is among 110 organizations statewide that got money to support summertime learning opportunities for children. Also happening today, the East Hartford Farmer's Market will open. I love a good farmer's market. Well, organizers say it'll run between 3 and 6 this evening on the lawn of the public library. Now, the town says the farmer's market will be doubling all supplemental nutrition assistance program purchases. It's being funded by End Hunger Connecticut's Fresh Match and True Match programs. The farmer's market will run each Tuesday between now and October 24th. So go out and support your local community there, community farmers. In the meantime, the Connecticut Water Company and Operation Fuel say they'll be expanding their partnership to help customers who need some financial assistance. The groups will offer free water conservation kits to income eligible customers. It's meant to help save families nearly 15% on their water bills. The kits include devices that reduce water use for faucets, showers, and toilets. Well, today, a Revolutionary War battle site is getting a big grant. The Ridgefield Historical Society will get more than $117,000, and the group said it plans to use that money for archaeological tests and to map the battlefield through modern-day Ridgefield.